In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. I take this opportunity to wish you all, wherever you are, a very happy and holy Christmas. May the Lord grant you and your families the abundant blessings which only the child Jesus can bring. Let's stand here giving thanks for the joy of Christmas and thanking God that he is with us. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are Son of God and Son of Mary, Christ of mercy. Christ have mercy. You are Word made flesh and splendour of the Father, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. And may Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that as we are bathed in the new radiance of your incarnate word, the light of faith which illumines our minds, may also shine through in our deeds, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. This the Lord proclaims to the ends of the earth. Say to the daughters of Zion, look, your Saviour comes, the prize of his victory with him, his trophies before him. They shall be called the holy people, the Lord's redeemed, and you shall be called the sought after, city not forsaken. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. When the kindness and love of God our Saviour for mankind were revealed, it was not because he was concerned with any righteous actions we might have done ourselves. It was for no reason except his own compassion that he saved us. By means of the cleansing water of rebirth and by renewing us with the Holy Spirit, which he has so generously poured over us through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. He did this so that we should be justified by his grace to become heirs looking forward to inheriting eternal life. The word of the Lord. with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to luke glory to you o lord now when the angels had gone from them to heaven the shepherds said to one another let us go to bethlehem to see this thing that has happened which the lord has made known to us so they hurried away and found mary and joseph and the baby lying in the manger when they saw the child, they repeated what they had been told about him, and everyone who heard it was astonished at what the shepherds had to say. As for Mary, she treasured all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds went back glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was exactly as they had been told. The Gospel of the Lord. Christmas is always a time for most of us which brings back memories Please God, very good memories for many people. For me, it's memories of family, memories of friends, memories of Carmelite community, memories of what makes a home. And I can remember so often when I was growing up, Christmas was a time where you longed for things, you had ideas of what would be a good Christmas present. That's what kids are like. And I would always have things in mind, but coming from a very Chinese family, every Christmas I got books and educational things. And if I wanted to enjoy something, I'd have to go to a friend's place because friends got toys. The only toy that I ever got growing up for Christmas was Scrabble, which I got at the age of seven. And none of my friends knew what it was. And so growing up within a happy family, looking at things, you'd always look to see what other people had got because invariably it was more interesting than something educational or, or another book. Today's gospel is quite extraordinary because 
it's the most important event in world history and there's nothing extraordinary about it. It's so ordinary. In fact, it's less than ordinary because it's ordinary in poverty. A shed where a baby's born with mother and father and that's about it. And ordinary shepherds turn up and have a look and they turn away and go away. And that's it, the end of the story. I think what Christmas is saying to us each year is that the wonderful thing about this is that it's in the midst of ordinariness, in the midst of something which is not part of expectation, in the midst of something that no one would want or hope for for Christmas, that God chooses to come. And in coming to this, God makes holy and glorifies the ordinary things of life. Not the things we hope for, but the simple truth of what life is. That's what God chose to come into. And in doing that, made the ordinary, the things we take for granted and never bother to think twice about. They make those places the places in which we meet God. We meet God in having a cup of coffee with somebody. We meet God when we make our breakfast in the morning. We meet God when we help someone who's in difficulty or struggling because this is ordinary, normal life. People come to Christmas and so often wish for something, but that's not what God chose to be part of. God chose to be part of my life and your life not very exciting, not extraordinary, just very forgettable. And that's the, the image that we have here. If we didn't put the crib onto a Christmas card, it's the most forgettable image that we have. It's so, so different to his death. But the image of the beginning of joy of God coming into the world is so forgettable, it's hardly noticeable. And we need to learn from that. We don't try to find God in exceptional things, nor do we seek or want anything extraordinary. Because when we do that, we fail to recognize how God came into the world today. And all we have to do is go looking for God in the ordinary. And if we look, we will find, because in the midst of nothing, there is joy. And let's stand and profess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, <coughs> creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, <coughs> was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come. <coughs> I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We have the child Jesus with us always in the ordinary moments of our life. Let's, in the ordinariness of our lives, bring our prayers to God. For the Holy Church of God, that we may joyfully proclaim God's presence among us through his incarnate Son. Let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of all peoples, that they may know the light which darkness can never overpower. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Hear our prayer. For those separated from us, separated from the ones they love at this time, that he, child of Bethlehem, may draw them into the consoling warmth of the family feast. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all our families celebrating this joyful feast, as we welcome our Saviour, so we will see and welcome him in his poor. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are sick and bereaved may receive healing and acceptance through Christ and the intercession of St. Mary of the Cross. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, that the peace and saving power of Christ will be granted to them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, we make these and all our prayers through Christ our Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May our offerings be worthy, we pray, O Lord, of the mysteries of the Nativity this day, 
that just as Christ was born a man and also shone forth as God, so these earthly gifts may confer on us what is divine through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in the mystery of the word made flesh, a new light of your glory has shone upon the eyes of our mind, so that as we recognize in him God made visible, we may be caught up through him in love of things invisible. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, Lord, God of hosts, heaven and heaven earth, earth are the full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Teresa, Saint John of the Cross, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. <coughs> I shan't under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
and let us pray. Grant us, Lord, as we honour with joyful devotion the nativity of your Son, that we may come to know with fullness of faith the hidden depths of this mystery and to love them ever more and more through Christ our Lord. And I hope and pray that this Christmas season will be one of joy for you, that you will travel if you travel safely, and that you will bring Christ, the newborn child, to all that you meet. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And my mighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.